Good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your humble homes. Welcome to my channel. This is a challenging time for all of us. So when I'm sharing information during this time, I'm hoping it is informative. I'm not um, fear mongering and I'm just simply trying to share information that I think is useful. Um, UK's, first of all, I mean, it, as of now, even as of now, the innuendo of British langu language is not clear. Um, why I say that is that even though Boris Johnson has not directly said the words, this is a lockdown, and there is no legisl legislative um, law, I mean, it's not enforceable by law, by innuendo, it is. We have to consider that Boris Johnson's recommendations are enforceable by law. They're not recommendations at all. They are not suggestions. So they come over as recommendations, they come over as suggestions, they come over as proposals, but they are not. View whatever he says as law and enforceable by law. The only, the only thing I do not understand is that he's telling people to stay at home and to um, not go and see their grandmothers or their mothers, and he's trying to promote social distancing. And yet, um, a health workers at the NHS, they are allowed to have a slot one hour before opening time. Now, I decided I would go and have a look. And because I work opposite Tesco and we have a car park, I thought, well, let me go and have a nip and see what's going on because it just it adds to the flavour of the video. And I like to see rather than hear about what is actually happening. Anyway, I was as I was coming, it's about maybe about a mile road to, maybe about a mile long to get from where I live to the Tesco. And so at nine o'clock exactly, well, no, maybe five to nine exactly, I left my home, drove down towards Tesco and had to stop halfway. The traffic wasn't going anywhere. So I'm like, what's going on? Anyway, I decided to back round and go round the back way to um, where I work and was able to get in the under underpass, in, in the car park under the building. So as I'm going as I'm going across the road, um, one of the ladies, I saw a lady underneath the underpass and I said to her, you know, the traffic is terrible. What's going on anyway? The whole of Dunstable Road, chuck a block from the airport, you know, from Junction 11, where you, not the airport, from Junction 11, right up to where um, Tesco is on Skimpot Lane. And then the roundabout, because people are blocking the roundabout, nobody can't go left, right or centre. Anyway, I was going to go under the underpass and have a look to see what the NHF health workers, how they were getting on with their shopping. I, I like to play a bit of a journalistic role. Anyway, I didn't even have to get that far because I thought they had a priority slot. I thought they would just all be able to go in and, um, you know, just do what they needed to do quickly and get out. That was how I visualised it. But one of the girls who who works where I work was coming out of coming out from the underpass and she said, You're not going over there, are you? I said, Well, I was gonna go and take a look. And she said, Don't even bother. She said, the queue is all the way around the car park, all the way around the perimeter of Tesco. I said, What for NHS staff, for health workers? She said, Yes. Gosh, I said, you know what? I said, I don't even want to go and talk to anybody or ask anybody what's going on. What I'll do is I'll just reverse and go back home. 
The thing is, is that because Boris Johnson hasn't been clear over these few weeks, and he's saying, oh, no, we're not going to have a lockdown. Oh, no, we're not going to take those measures. Oh, but when we do, it's going to be fast and furious. And nobody quite knows what exactly what he's saying. What he was warning people and they weren't listening was this. And now, because a day ago, he's actually said that the words lockdown have been mentioned. People have gone stir crazy. Stir crazy. And this is where problems start, because this is where people get desperate they they're lining up. They you know they got their trolleys. They don't want to be. Um, they don't want to lose out, and it's chaos. And it's going to be dog eat dog when they get in. They're not limiting the um, number of people to go in like Lidl's are. Lidl's you one in one out. That's what Lidl is doing, but not Tesco. So that was the drama this morning. Um, You know, I think it's really, really sad. What am I calling this? UK recommendations are enforceable. Yes, because it's a lockdown, I wanted to go and see my mum. And I know that technically, even though they haven't said it, I can't drive 20 miles to go and see my mum. I'm not taking a risk of somebody saying to me, what are you doing? So I've spoken to her. She's fine. She's not in the house alone. So that's the most important thing. Um... My, a friend of mine, her mother is blind, and I, I don't think she understood the seriousness of it, that at some point, I mean, she's not actually in London proper. She's like um, on the outskirts. I think her mum lives in Edgware, which comes under Middlesex, and she lives in Harrow, which comes under Middlesex. So that's kind of greater London. So they might be OK for a little while. But she still wasn't aware and her mother is blind and her mother relies on her to go to her house every single day and cook for her and do whatever. And when I said to her, you know, they're isolating, they're putting, you know, you're not meant to be going to see um, the elderly who are in quarantine and blah, blah, blah. She said nothing's going to stop her. But I just had to let her know um, what the situation might be, should it be extended to Greater London. At the moment, I think it's only concentrating in central London and the surrounding boroughs. Um, measures, yeah, the measures, these um, so-called, um, what do you call it? Lockdown measures are supposed to be reviewed every month. And I'm going to tell you in my next video, 300 detainees, immigration detainees, have been sent home. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts on that in a separate video. Um, So we've got Jamaica bringing in Cuban experts to curtail the, um, the virus. We've got Italy bringing in Chinese experts to curtail the virus. Instead of doing all of this, why doesn't, since it hasn't got that bad in the UK, why isn't the UK bringing in experts to curtail the virus before it gets bad? Why are they waiting until it gets bad before they're bringing in experts, medical experts? Because there are people who know what to do. Uh, And also... um, As a part of this lockdown, apparently employees who are unable to work um, get up to 2,500 a week, a month. The key word is up to. Um, If we're modelling it off of America's uh, model of doing the same thing, that means you're going to get the personal allowance. So if your personal allowance is 10,000, that's how much you're going to get divided by 12, I would assume, or divided by the months that they are going to pay you for. So it's not going to be anything, um, any any big amount. And I guess that's the easiest way that they can, um, they can, they can kind of work it out without asking individuals how much they earn. So whoever. So whatever your, I guess, I don't know how they know you're not working. At some point, I guess you'll have to fill up an application. 
but then they'll base it on your um, personal um, liability. Your, your yeah, your personal liability or your tax liability in America they call it. So whatever your tax liability is, that's the amount you'll get. And for each, and if you're married, for your partner as well. So 2,500, it sounds great. I bet everybody be saying, oh, great, 2,500. And some 1,000 is being banded around. They ain't going to be giving people 1,000, love. No, 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 no. You think they have 1,000 pound for Dashwe? On immigrants and goodness knows who else. They ain't got it, love. They ain't got that. So what they're going to do is give personal allowance and that's assuming you've been working for a certain period of time I would think you know they've got it all sus they've got it all worked out these these ideas haven't just come up overnight this has all been very carefully planned so they have the plan in place and it wouldn't surprise me if you know maybe in a couple of months you'd find the money trickling into your bank account I don't know so I was wondering how they're going to work out everyone's salary. But then um, I noticed what they were doing in America. And I said, oh, that's how they'll probably do it. But um, it is going to be, it's probably going to be quite time consuming. Um, by the time they get it all through, I'd imagine the crisis might be over. Or I hope it's going to be over. So what I don't like is that the British language is not clear. It's designed to confuse and entrap. Um, I say that because this was from CNBC News. And their statement was, it comes roughly 24 hours after the Prime Minister warned further restrictions, st further restrictive measures might be needed in the capital city with evidence suggesting the flu-like virus is spreading faster in London. Further restrictive measures, what are they? We haven't been told what they are. Yes, we've been told that, you know, you, you can't now can't go to parks, but everything is trickled bit by bit. First it's one thing, and then it's another, and then I understand people at Lowestoft Beach um, in Suffolk, which is quite a while way out of London, all on the beach enjoying themselves in the sun. Now the beaches have been closed. I understand there were some people in some big park. Now the park has been closed. They're not clear. Tell people, give people clear instructions instead of innuendo that people don't understand. And then in the meantime, people are getting um, the coronavirus is spreading. I mean, when you think about all those people in Pesco that are not limited, they can all just rush in. What about that? Isn't that the panic? Can you, you know, will get you the virus, won't it? I mean, you're amongst so many people. I thought you were supposed to practice social distancing. But that's not social distancing if you are... I'm looking at myself instead of looking at the camera. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that's not social distancing if you are not... Um, if you're mingling up with all these people to get your stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Um, just tell people it's a lockdown so people know where they stand. Me personally, I could have driven. I, I just don't trust the system. So I didn't drive to London. I didn't drive 18 miles to London because I don't trust the system. I don't quite know what is going on. And that is what is confusing. And that is what's going to entrap people. People don't know clearly what is going on. At least in Italy, they say lockdown. Everybody stays in their houses. They can't go be going to supermarkets and all that kind of stuff. The, the supermarkets would have been better instead of all this allowing people to go in and fill up all their trolleys with goodness knows what and have people queuing. They would have been better off employing staff to do deliveries. And that would have been fair because you can monitor it and you can regulate it and people could only um, order a certain amount of stuff and that would be fair and it would be effective, it would be efficient and it would be healthy. Then you can say you are promoting social distancing. But allowing hundreds of people to go and do their shopping, 
under one roof, what is that doing? Isn't that exacerbating the situation? <sighs> UK's giving out, yeah, I've already said that. Um, so what I put here, if um, the UK is worked out on the same model as the USA, you'll be getting your tax-free personal allowance, whatever that is. In America, the lowest amount you'll get is $600. They're not going to give you anything lower than that. The maximum you're going to get is $1,200, from what I understood. So it is capped. Um, the proposal about the money, it's not finalised yet. This is just a proposal at this point. They can withdraw it at any time. So don't start thinking, oh, I'm going to get $1,000. I'm going to get $600. I'm going to get anything at all. Don't plan that way. And in some cases, you have to pay it back. And in some cases, when you get your tax refund, they're going to take it out of your tax refund. In some cases, it might be a gift, but then you're going to have to um, record it as income. So you'll get taxed on that. So some of it, for some people, low-income earners, they're saying it won't be taxed. But I can't imagine them doing all that work for billions of pe millions of people, trying to work out each person's individual situation. They're going to have to do a blanket thing in order to make it easy, in order to make it efficient. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And... It's, people are just not going to get it and they're not definitely not going to get it when they need it and I'm sure that a lot of these people are out there doing all these shopping you know it's, it's before payday it's just after Christmas so you know they haven't got a lot of liquid cash and there'll be some that don't have any cash at all and they'll be trying to get um, one of these um, high interest rate credit cards the other day I saw an I saw a credit card 3250 APR Another one was 1,280 APR. So these poor buggers who haven't got any money and they're going to take out these high-risk credit cards so that they can feed their family and feed their children. They're going to be in a worse mess afterwards than they were before. This is going to throw people over the edge. Because what is it? Christmas was only, what, two months ago? A lot of people, they did all their Christmas shopping thinking, OK, a couple of months I can I can pay you know pay back for the money for the stuff I bought at Christmas and then they find themselves in a situation where they're having to buy up for at least 12 weeks if there's a proper lockdown and there will be a proper lockdown where you can't leave your yard proper lockdown so now people are thinking oh my goodness I've got to get enough for 12 weeks and how do you measure 12 weeks in your head? You can't because so far you've been working at a week or a month. And so to kind of visualise how much you need for three months, how do you do that? And now if the shops were sensible, they would be taking online orders so that everybody could have a delivery once a month stay safe in their home, they wouldn't have to panic. But oh no, they're not organised like that. They're not organised like that at all. They have to create chaos. They have to create panic. And then they say, oh, don't panic. Don't panic. If you panic, they're not going to have anything on the shelves. It's silly. It's ludicrous. You are all right, you lot of rich bastards. <laughs> Sorry. You rich people are all right because you have the money. You've probably been stocking up for goodness knows how long. You probably even own your own shops. You probably have access. So the rich are okay. So it's fine for them to, you know, in their supercilious tone, say, oh, don't panic. It's ridiculous if you panic. If you panic, you're going to cause a ration. You're going to cause us to ration the food. 
Well, if you don't want people to panic, put a system in place that works for everyone. Back in the um, olden days, everybody got served and they and everybody, you, they, you know, a lot of the elderly are saying when food was rationed, it wasn't like this. But we're now living in a virtual world. We're living in a, a world where we're dealing with credit cards. We're dealing with electronic sales. We're dealing with everything electronically. Even the news comes electronically. So it gets around much faster than in, in the war, in wartime when they were restricted. They probably had a wireless and, you know, it was all, it was orderly. But now you've got people with countless credit cards and they can buy whatever they want. I mean, we've seen videos with men pushing trolleys with about 15, 10 keg packets of rice. And I can't believe that that's just for their family. Maybe it is. Maybe they're going to sell it on. I don't know. But it was absolutely ridiculous. The trolley couldn't even hold any more and he could hardly push it. And there was about three of them like that. But I think that the money that's being given to you 600 pound or whatever the personal allowance is is to help keep the economy running because bills essential bills will have to be paid so your rent will have to be paid your mortgage will have to be paid your gas and your light bill and your water rates and your council tax i think in this time council top tax should be suspended that's a hell of a lot of money they should be suspending council tax. But they're not. That would help a lot of people. Over a hundred quid. Everybody has to pay. So, what I'm thinking is, if they give you just enough to pay those essential services, what they are in fact, what they, you are in fact doing is giving them back the money to help them run the country to help the economy going because they've got not they've got nothing to lose they do need electricity to run they need water to run they need all of those and you're going to need to pay for that so that's going to be your priority for some it might not be their priority but that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking that that's why they'll give you a certain amount because it's not much it will just about allow you, some of you, to pay your basic bills. It won't give you anything for anything else. So I think I'm going to stop there. I've got a couple more videos coming up. This is um, serious times, but we have to keep it up a bit because before, uh, forewarned is forearmed. And that's really what I'm doing. I'm just forewarning people. If you want to ignore it, that's up to you. I mean, I've told a lot of people a lot of things and they think, ah, you know, poo -poo, what do you know, you're exaggerating, blah, 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 and see it, yeah. So, um, it's up to you, really. I mean, what am I advising? I'm not really advising anything. I'm just really, I'm not even suggesting anything. All I'm really saying is that just take it from me that the recommendations and suggestions by Boris Gardner are enforceable by law. They're not recommendations. So don't think, oh, he hasn't, he hasn't said there's a lockdown. He hasn't said, I can't do this. He hasn't said we can't go here. He hasn't said we can't go there. You might be unlucky. You might be an unlucky one because... You have taken the risk and you've thought, oh, because he hasn't said so. He hasn't been explicit. You can do whatever you like. You can't. You can't. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.